Hello there, this is uh, Lesson 3, Part 2 of PSC 2, Unit 13, last lesson of the unit. Uh, today we're going to talk uh, about proportions with sides, area, and volume included today. So, let's get started. Okay, I uh, just wanted to touch on this here. Um, we could go from a side, which is a one-dimensional, to an area, which is two-dimensional, and then a volume, which is three-dimensional. We learned yesterday that we could take one sixth and square it. So one squared over six squared, and the ratio of the areas of whatever this object solid might be would be one over thirty six. Um, the ratio of their volumes, their three dimensional um, dimension, would be. 1 cubed over 6 cubed, which would be 1 to 216. If you would, pause the video at this point and see if you could figure out the one-dimensional and three-dimensional ratios of the second example. Uh, if you did this, you would take the square root of 4 over the square root of 225, which would equal 2 over 15. Now, in order to get the uh, three-dimensional volume or uh, ratio, you would have to have 2 cubed over 15 cubed. So 2 cubed over 15 cubed. And I know 2 cubed is 8. 15 cubed is 3,375. Okay, last one here. Um... What you might have noticed here in the first example, or in the second example, was in order to go from two-dimensional, you had to go back to one-dimensional and then up to three-dimensional. Likewise, if I want to get to two-dimensional from three-dimensional, I have to go back to one-dimensional, which would be the cube root of 8 or the cube root of 64, which is two-fourths. And it is definitely okay if you reduce that to one-half. I then square that, and I get one-fourth. So the ratio of sides, right, the one-dimensional ratio would be, let's say, m over n. Then the ratio of the areas would be m squared over n squared. And the ratio of the volumes would be m cubed over n cubed. All right, let's get started with a couple of examples. All right, so we got this, uh, uh, this triangular pyramid looks familiar, right? The uh, heights have a ratio of 3 to 5. Um, now, that would be a one-dimensional ratio, 3 to 5. So that tells me two-dimensional would be 9 to 25. And a common mistake that's made is that students will take and they will then square the two-dimensional. We don't want that. We want to cube the one-dimensional, which would give us 27 over 125. So we know the volume of the, looks like the small pyramid, is 81. Okay, so volume tells me three-dimensional. So I'm going to take this ratio of 27 over 125, and I'm going to set it equal to 81 over, let's call the volume of the large pyramid, x. The reason I put the 81 on top is because it represents the small ratio, whereas the x represents the larger of the two ratios. So... As I do a little bit of cross multiplication, I actually don't need to in this case. I see that, um, that uh, well, you could do the cross multiplication. I don't really want to. But um, what you should get is, uh, I think that's 375. So there you go. Um, go ahead and check your work with that cross multiplication there. Make sure I'm on track, but that should be correct. Of course, be careful with your labels. When we're talking volume, of course, those are cubic centimeters. All right, another example. Following cylinders are similar. We're given a surface area of 4 ninths. We want to know the radius of the small and the large cylinder, uh, or at least the ratio of the radius. And in this case, we would take that 4 ninths and we would put it in this two-dimensional space here. That would make the ratio of the radius, or radii, two-thirds. That would make the ratio of the volumes, 
8 27 Okay, now we work our way down here in the problem. It says if the volume of the small cylinder is given, and it's 24, right, so volume tells me three dimensions, so 8 over 27 is equivalent to 24 over x, which is the volume of the large cylinder. Okay, I'm going to see here if I cross multiply, it looks like the volume of the large cylinder will be 81 cubic inches. All right, one more problem. That should be it for today. All right, uh, one of my favorites. Um, what we notice here is uh, as you look at the dimensions, right, it looks like each of the sides uh, are a 1 to 3 ratio, or the height and the width of both of these gummy bears. Uh, pretty large gummy bears. Looks like the yellow gummy bear is 2.5 pounds. Uh, so we got some work to do to find the uh, weight of the blue gummy bear. However, uh, we can work our way through this table over here uh, and find the appropriate proportion and then do some work. Now, the key word in this problem is the word weighs. And weight is a three-dimensional, um, uh, what should we call, vocabulary term. So anytime you see weight, you should think volume. Okay. So if the weight is 2.5 pounds... I'm going to want to find the ratio of the volumes, which in this case would be 1 over 27. I take 1 cubed over 3 cubed, and I get 27, or 1 over 27. So if the ratio of the volumes is 1 to 27, then if the small gummy bear weighs 2.5 pounds, we got some work to do to find the weight of the, the larger gummy bear. All right, so let's cross multiply. So when I cross multiply, I get x times 1 equals 27 times 2.5. 27 times 2.5 comes out to be 67.5. And, of course, we're looking for weight, so we're going to say pounds. So this, uh, this gummy bear <laughs> weighs about as much as, uh, I don't know, a third grader, something like that. Um, okay, guys, so uh, key uh, items for today, volume is M cubed over N cubed, and uh, the word weight uh, is a volume vocabulary term. So good luck with the, the homework. Questions can be answered at any time, so feel free to ask.